There is a 3D printing super material and chances are you're sleeping on it. Uh, not to say that your like bed is made out of it. I mean like you're not using it, sleeping on it like you're not using it. You, I should have just said that. There's a 3D printing super material and chances are you're not using it. That's much more clear. Why didn't I just say that? Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D printing professor. And when I started 3D printing, almost a decade ago, the only thing that people 3D printed in was a material called ABS. It is a type of plastic, the same type of plastic that they make Legos out of. And if you've ever stepped on a Lego, you understand how strong ABS can be. But ABS was not the best material for 3D printing with, even though the machines that I started with were designed to print with ABS, it was um, difficult. A lot of times the prints would start to shrink and they would shrink dramatically before you finish printing them, causing layers to separate. And so while small prints were okay, larger prints were a challenge and there was a lot of people trying to overcome these problems. Then somebody invented PLA, literally invented this material for 3D printing, and the result is dramatic. PLA is a material that was designed for 3D printing. And if you're new to 3D printing right now, I recommend you just use PLA. However, back when PLA came out, those of us who were ingrained in the ABS way of doing things kind of turned up our nose at PLA. Oh, it melts at a lower temperature. I could put it in my car on a hot day and it'll warp. You don't have that problem with ABS. Oh, it's, it's more, it's, it's solid, but if you bend it, it breaks too easily. Whereas ABS, why, it'll just bend if you stress it too much. You've really got to work to make these things break. And while those things were true, the fact of the matter is, once I converted over to PLA, I realized it is more than sufficient for almost everything that you're going to do. And it really does 3D print incredibly easily. But every once in a while, I do want something that can stand up to a little bit more abuse than PLA can. And while I could go back to ABS, the truth is printing in PLA has shown me just how much of a headache we were putting up with, with ABS. We could use PETG and a lot of times PETG is my go-to material for something that I need to be just a little bit more rugged than PLA. And while that works, this piece right here, it's, it's a cell phone holder so that I can take my cell phone and put it in there and then put it on a stand and record things with it. But it also has a boot on top for microphones. And, and this is just a simple two-part print with a rubber band in it. But this thing has broken many times and there are many parts of it that are being held together right now by super glue. While PETG is maybe a step up, it's not a step up all the way up. It still breaks. It's still a hard material that occasionally just can't stand up to the abuse of, of the work that I put it into. So if I'm not talking about PLA and I'm not talking about ABS and I'm not talking about PETG, what am I talking about? Well, the material that I'm talking about is one that most people think is just for fun and silly prints. It's a material that people think has no actual application out of doing prints that uh, you'd hand to a kid because they're fun and squishy. I'm talking about TPU, flexible filament. I was shown the real strength of TPU when my friend Jimmy from Jimmy Shaw's Tidbits showed me a print that he put on the back of his RV. It was designed to hold onto his bumper and then provide a mount for a PVC tube that he put some stuff in. And he took that mount on the back of his RV, printed it in solid TPU. And then he drove that on the back of his RV from California to Colorado and back and never gave it a second thought. It was able to handle that trip with absolutely no problems. And to my knowledge, it's still holding on today. TPU is darn near indestructible. How strong is it? Nothing. 
It doesn't care. It can take a hit and it doesn't even show a scar on its surface. I was playing with some a little while ago. Somebody recommended I try it for a actual useful print and I printed something that was tall and thin. Now, because it was tall and thin and made out of a flexible material, it wiggled and the print quality just degraded as it went higher and higher. So I took it off the build plate and thought, well, I'll just rip it up and tear it and break it. But I couldn't. It bonded together so tight. And because it was flexible, when I tried to wrench it apart, it gave instead of breaking. Now, TPU comes in a range of flexibilities. I have here two rolls of Polyflex from my friends at Polymaker. And while some of it is very soft and, and you could almost you know, tie it up like a knot, TPU 95 is a lot more rigid. Not super rigid, it still can be used to make flexible prints with, but even with one shell and no infill, you can tell it's, it's a little bit harder to flex than the ones that are a lot softer. And this is the material that, okay, Again, people look at this and they go, I don't get it. It's not squishy. And why would you print it with infill? Because then you can't squish it. But that's the trick. If you treat it like any other material and print it with infill, in fact, print it with really high infill, it loses its flexibility, yes, but not its durability. Now, I have here a couple of blocks that I've 3D printed. And the only thing that I changed on these blocks was the infill percentage on them. This block was printed with 10% infill. And you can see that if I bend it, even though it's almost 20 millimeters thick, yeah, it flexes. But at 10%, it's maybe a little too flexible and maybe not usable as a functional print. At 25%, the flex is a lot less, but it's still there. At 50% infill, by this point, it's taking some serious effort to give it some flex. And while it's not rigid, it is very, very strong. And again, I could hit this with a hammer and it wouldn't do any damage to it. Now, I don't recommend you print at 100% infill under any circumstances. A lot of times infill is designed to overlap itself. And if you overlap a line width on itself, it squishes out the sides and your print quality goes all to garbage. But if you print it at 90% infill, this feels like a solid block of very hard rubber. And yes, I can give it a little bit of a flex, but that's mostly because of the long distance that I designed this thing to be with. If I try and bend it along this way, yeah, there's just nothing going there. Now, at this point, I wanted to say, well, you might have to redesign things a little bit for TPU, maybe bulk them up a little bit. And I was going to show this print again, this pet G print that I use to hold my phone because one of the parts is relatively thin. And when I printed it in TPU, sure enough, I was able to flex it with my fingers, even though this was printed at 90% infill. However, something interesting happened. When I took it and attached the rubber bands to it, sure, it bends backwards just a little bit. But then when I put my phone into it, the phone pulls it back forward. And so in this particular case, the case that was supposed to be, here's the reason why you couldn't do this or need to redesign it a little bit, it actually worked perfectly. And I gotta wonder, is TPU just great in every situation and I have been ignoring the possibilities of this? Yeah, maybe. Now, there are some caveats to using TPU. For instance, it's best when printed with a direct drive 3D printer. If you have a Bowden style 3D printer that has the drive further away from the head, you can still use TPU, especially this TPU 95 from Polyflex Polymaker because it is a little bit stiffer and so it's easier to push it through that tube. But if this flexible material gets the opportunity to go sideways at any time and that's less effort than going into your nozzle, it'll do that. So with a Bowden style printer, you got to remember to print it a little bit hotter 
and a lot slower to make sure that it gets good and melty and goes out the nozzle and not any other direction. Whereas direct drive 3D printers can handle flexible filaments usually a lot easier. But more and more printers are coming out nowadays that are direct drive. So chances are you're ready to use TPU right now. And I think it would be well worth your while to get a roll of it. And sure, you can use it to make fun little silly prints, but try printing something, something that you want to use regularly with TPU and see how it does for you because it might just be the strongest 3D print material. Not strong because it can withstand a lot of pressure, but strong because no matter what you do to it, it'll bounce back without any problems. Now, I don't recommend that you use TPU for just any print. This is one of those infinity cubes. I've got one here printed in PLA, and yeah, you see how it works. It folds together. It's a rather fun little fidget toy, but when it was printed in TPU, it, it didn't break apart. These connectors that are designed to snap didn't. They bonded together. And again, that's the strength of TPU, but it's also its weakness. If you're trying to make something that you can flex like a toy, well, it's not the right material in all cases. In fact, the flexibility of it caused the joints of this to just separate instead of breaking. But... In other applications, it can be a miracle. Now, I have had people challenge me on this one and say, well, what if I wanted to 3D print like a combustion chamber? And for sure, combustion chambers get hot. And that might be a problem with any thermal plastic. But could TPU withstand the pressures of a, like a combustion chamber? And I'm not quite sure the answer to that one. I feel like the slight flexibility, even when printed, with high infill might work against something like that. But what if we could do a hybrid? What if we did a couple of millimeters of TPU for the strength and then a couple of millimeters of PLA or PETG around that for the rigidity? Could we get the best of both worlds in one? I also suspect that this might have application in cosplay. And while the flexibility of the material might not be the biggest sell in cosplay, the fact that it's rugged and that you could hit things with it without really damaging them because it does flex just a little bit could be a big plus. Now, I don't know what would paint these the best because while they are a little bit flexible, I think acrylic might flake off if you flex it a couple of times, but I'm sure there's something and I feel like the cosplay community, if they took to TPU, could do some amazing things with it. Props and even costume parts might benefit from the properties of TPU over a more rigid plastic. I think there's a lot of potential. I think that there's a lot of things that we could still experiment with if we took TPU just a little bit more seriously. Well, that's it for now, and thank you very much for watching. Remember, you are a child of God, and you're special to me, so take care of yourself, and if you can, somebody else too. I'll see you next time.